welcome to this video in which I will be talking through the pros and cons of either twisting off a keiki or cutting a keiki by the cane. I'm glad that I'm behind in my filming schedule because Ila Cleon saw my Orchid Chores diary video and was wondering why I was cutting pieces of the mother cane off when I was harvesting my keikis. Because most of the time we are told that we should be twisting keikis off the mother cane and then pot them up or mount them or do whatever. So poor Ila or Ayla Cleon, sorry if I mispronounce your name, received a novel as a reply because I could not link this video. Had I made it early I would have said check this one out. So let's get into it. This is my Dendrobium Berryoda. Looking lush with beautiful new growths and keikis. Let's turn her around because I've been protecting the roots of the keikis up against the hedge where I have more humidity. I've got four keikis. Yeah, look at this keiki right here. What a difference when you've got water during the growing season, hey? <laughs> right, got this keiki, this keiki, and then I've got one cane with two keikis. And we'll be taking them all off and I will be potting them up at a later stage in this video. So first of all, I want to prepare my keikis. Harvesting time, yay. Lots of water around the roots. Now, these roots have been misted throughout the process of growing these keikis. They've also been up against a hedge where my humidity is much, much higher in comparison to the rest of my patio. That does not mean that these roots have been absorbing water. They still have the Teflon effect of new roots. The velamen isn't functioning to provide for the keikis. The cane that they are attached to is providing for the keikis. And I hope that you can see how the water is just repelling. The velamen is not even going green. Always remember that once you take keikis off a mother plant, it becomes a seedling, no matter the size. And usually we don't like to propagate our orchids unless we have three or more growths, simply because the orchid needs more storage organs in order to make it through and have enough to provide for whatever we're trying to propagate. When it comes to keikis, it becomes a single growth, a seedling with a single growth. And that is when we have to be super, super careful what we do from the get-go and protect whatever that little keiki gives us so that it can make it on its own. And that means protect the roots, keep the roots from breaking. Any roots that break, they may not branch. There is so much energy going into root production and it is fantastic while the keiki is attached to the plant. Once it is off the plant, it's game on that keiki has to provide for itself. So in my strategy, when I harvest keikis, I always make sure to either forfeit harvesting the keiki and just leave it on the mother plant because it'll give me some blooms eventually, especially if a keiki isn't producing roots, as is the case with this one right here, which I hope I can show you. There's a keiki growing out of this cane right here, and it's got its own little keiki on the top it never ever grew roots. So I just left it on there because, you know, why bother, why remove something? And it did bloom for me earlier on in the season. Now that it has its own little keiki, I'm going to discuss what is the benefit of twisting off as opposed to cutting the cane. And I'm going to also demonstrate how difficult it is to twist off a keiki without damaging roots. The idea being the roots are the lifeline of a keiki. Nothing else is sustaining this keiki. Look at the tight spaces here. Just, I mean, where do you start? We've got a root going down the cane into the little crevice there. I hope this is visible. And that belongs to this keiki up here. So if you're going by the principle of twisting, where do I hold on to? The keiki is not really hardened off yet, but it's time to remove it. The roots are long enough. Where do I hold on to twist it? Another option for this keiki would be to take a super sharp knife and get into the space between where it's attached to the mother cane and either cut through it very, very gently and always mindful of the roots. You see where I'm coming from with regards to the pros and cons of twisting as opposed to cutting off part of the mother cane. Another thing as well when it comes to taking the keiki off and the roots are not yet viable and able to sustain 
the little keiki. When you cut it off with the mother cane, you are providing sustenance for that keiki to draw energy from what is remaining in that cane that you've cut it off with. So you're not entirely making that little keiki depend on only the roots that are not even yet functioning. But I do want to try and twist off a keiki for demonstration purposes, but you can see how complicated it is even down here. Look at this root system and there's one going into the leaf. Look at how tight everything is packed in there. So yes, for demonstration purposes, I would love to take one off, but in order to, you know, protect my keiki production here and not lose one, I'm not entirely sure I want to risk trying to pinch this one off without breaking it completely. You see why I'm just more and more inclined to be the person to cut a cane off with the keiki. Let's give it a go. Because what you want to do is twist it in one direction while resisting on the other side and not breaking any roots. That is the plan. There's a root tucked up behind here. Let's see if we can shift that and just continue but you see how difficult that is? And I'm really putting pressure on the base of the keiki. And what's the point? Why risk squishing the membrane, the cells, the structures down here with that pressure? It looks easy, but it is a tough, tough maneuver without damaging the base of your keiki because the base is eventually the future. Oh, isn't this a beautiful sight though? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Now, once you've done that, you want to make sure that you have some kind of a little vessel ready to put the roots into just so that when it comes to potting them up or mounting them, at least they won't desiccate because this keiki is now on its own. It has to survive all by itself. Now, when you look at this, you see this little keiki. Yay, we didn't break any roots. That's awesome. And now you're gonna mount the keiki, but what have you got to work with? I mentioned about squeezing and holding tight as you pinch the keiki and twist it to get it off that cane. That is the same factor and principle that's now going to apply when you mount the keiki, if that is what you choose to do. That base is so tender, and yet we have to secure keyword the keiki to a mount so that the roots don't get any abrasions and there is no wobble and eventually hopefully they will continue to extend and attach to the mount but in the meantime that little base down there we're supposed to secure the keiki tie it on firmly without damaging the base it's tough it really really is so why not just take off the old cane together with the keiki i mean this cane is spent, so there's no harm, no foul, to cut the keiki off right down here. Give ourselves some sustenance for it to continue to develop without having the stress of being all on its own. And then use the cane to help us with the potting up. Now, I'm not going to cut all the way down because this cane may, from the stress, give me another keiki further down the line. Who knows? We'll give it a go. Now, if we were to mount this, oh, another beautiful sight. If we were to mount this, we can use the cane as the tie-off point. This cane is hard, it's tough, we don't have to mess around with the roots or the base of the keiki, and we can mount it in any direction that we want. Suddenly, we have a better support for our mounting, including potting up. I mean, why not? I know that this is not conventional, but I don't normally do conventional if it complicates things and makes it more difficult for my orchids and my keikis or anything to grow on well. I prefer to go down the route of what is unconventional as long as it suits the purpose and the end result is the same, probably a little bit more secure and a little bit safer for my keikis. So I have another one left here, and this one is food for thought. Here's one nicely tucked in. Here's another keiki from last year that never really grew any roots to speak of. They just sort of frazzled and dried, probably because I didn't have enough water. Now the previous cane that we discussed, it was spent. All the blooms were done, all the nodes were kind of finished. There wouldn't be any blooms on that cane anymore. Here we have a keiki 
growing on a cane that has had two nodes, three nodes bloom. So you want to count that. Make sure when you look at your orchid, if you're going to take the cane off. If you're okay with saying, well, one or two flower spikes less in the next season, not a big deal. My focus is on the keiki, then, you know, cut the cane. But you see, we have another keiki up here. And the question now is, do we want to take this one along for the ride or do we want to twist this one off? And if we do twist it off, can we get it off safely? So you really have to study every angle, every option and make your decision based on what you're comfortable with. First of all, we can see a root. If we were to twist this off, we can see a root has gone down into that leaf. So we want to release that. Now, if we were to twist this one off, which we just may do depending, we have to kind of figure out where all the roots are. And in this case, <laughs> woohoo, they're in a star formation at the base. So the question is, twist it off, cut the cane off. Let's give it a go because this keiki is a little bit hardened off at the base. It already has its sheaths. So without, you know, too much pressure, let's see if just a rocking motion will remove it. Just to see where is the give, how far can we go without damaging too many roots. Push comes to shove if I'm not comfortable with what I'm feeling. Because until there is a give between the cane and the keiki in question, there is quite a bit of resistance as well. So twisting here is not really an option because of the star formation of the roots at the base. Rocking is working a little bit, but you see how much resistance there is between where the keiki is attached and how many angles I have to do. There comes a point though that you have already gone a little bit too far in your process of removing the keiki and the detachment is only holding on by a thread, meaning that if you were now to opt out and just cut the cane, there could be issues because there is no more connection. And at this point, getting a knife into that area is a very good idea, just as long as it's super, super sharp. And of course, be very, very careful. First of all, you don't want to be doing damage to the cane that you're working with, and you don't want to be cutting into any roots that your keiki has. Seeing as we're not taking the entire cane off, in this instance, this has to be done very, very carefully. We need all the roots. And eventually there is a lot more give and you can pull the cakey off. Now let's see if we did a good job or what damage we incurred on the root system. It's looking okay to me. Do we have the root tip? This root tip looks a little bit compromised, a little bit, but I think we have the majority of the roots that will serve a purpose. Oh my goodness, I can't get over this beautiful white velamen. Okay, so in the Tupperware it goes. Now, our fourth keiki, our mega keiki. Ooh, that's a biggie. That is a biggie. Look at this. Oh. Gorgeousness. Now, let's see upon closer inspection how we can do this. Unless kinking it down a bit is going to give me a better click moment. Just like with the other one that it just comes off and it just came off. Now, this keiki here is so big, it doesn't mean the roots are viable, that it actually may struggle. Just because, look at the length of the roots. In comparison to the size of the structure, it has to sustain. Beautiful though. However, if you were to mount such a large keiki, you can see how it is advantageous to take off part of the cane as well, because that little keiki or that big keiki is already quite heavy. Thankfully, we do have some sheaths at the bottom that'll help us with buffering against anything that we have to secure tightly on a mount. But you know what? I like the option for mounting if we take on a bit of the cane, just because also there is nutrition in that cane and the chances of me losing the keiki are much, much lower. Not every keiki is harvestable. 
Here's one from last year with hardly any roots. So I would never harvest a keiki like this. Thankfully, it is still attached, even though I could just pop it off much, much easier now. Chances for survival of this keiki are super slim. Okay, dendrobiums are tough, vigorous, they are survivors, and they somewhat break all the rules when it comes to being able to propagate themselves even with a small little growth like this, but it's not hurting my orchid to stay on. And eventually, if it chooses to grow its own new growth at the base, which will then produce roots, then I'll take it off. And I've also put cinnamon on my cut cane. So let's go and pot them up. So I have decided to pot my keikis up in a semi-hydroponic setup because in my climate here in southern Spain, this orchid can live outdoors all year round and semi-hydroponics makes it very, very easy. If it rains, the pot will never get flooded. But what I have here as well is some crushed terracotta. This is a landscaping material that was sent to me from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents in Portugal for me to try out because I'm a fan of ceramics and she figured that seeing as these are not glazed, they might serve a purpose for my environment and for me to give it a go. Now, these come in all sizes because I had like a container with all the different sizes and I want to keep the smaller sizes to replicate a ceramic effect. So I've taken the big chunks, which I'm just going to be using for crocking. And my crocking will go as high as the semi-hydro holes. That's it. The rest is going to be lava rock. And the reason I'm choosing lava rock with my keikis, even though the mother plant is in leka and self-watering, is because the roots aren't functioning of their own accord just yet. If I put them in leka, this velamen is not accustomed to such a wet environment and it could possibly, possibly, not have to be, but possibly rot out the roots. My best bet, without experimenting, without losing my keikis, is to put it into lava rock. This way, they have a lot of moisture around them, a lot of humidity around them, but they're not sat in a permanently wet environment. And lo and behold, magically, there is an appearance of a support, which I initially forgot to put in, but I think I'm going to need it. Not entirely sure, we shall see. Put my tag in by the semi-hydro holes as a marker as to where they are. And I want to make sure that I get the height right from jump and I can do that by putting them in individually, or what I can also do is take my keikis, wire them together at the right height, each and every one of them, and then pot them up. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a little, not a daisy chain, but they're all gonna be wired in a little grouping. As I group them like a little bunch of flowers, my focus is not on what the roots are doing. I'm trying not to run one root into the other. I'm still watching them, but my focus is on the level of the bases, ensuring that everybody has the same level. And bunched up in a little grouping like this, we are going to get them into the pot and secure them as a group onto the support. And very, very gently, <laughs> get lava rock in there. So I only have one cane now supported here on my hand as I fill up and around. And we can let go, check this out. Missed straight away, but straight away. The clay underneath is a desiccating agent. This is one of the biggest factors now is we don't want any of the media to be the one that's drawing moisture out of the roots. So, they are all safe and secure in their own little pot now. I have not filled the pot up all the way with lava rock. There is no need. These guys just need to get enough moisture and I will be doing plenty of misting just to keep the humidity around the base intact. And hopefully we will then be able to follow the progress of the roots. Are they gonna go up? Are they gonna go down? Either way, they're on their own now. And I hope that you understand why I'm a fan of cutting a cane off when it comes to a keiki. In many cases, the cane that the keiki comes from has served its purpose and there is no harm, no foul, giving the keiki a little bit of a good head start and support system as it is learning to grow all on its own. My pot looks a little bit funky at the moment, but that's the name of the game. At least the light training did work because that was the direction of the light over here when this keiki was growing. There we go. 
Let me know if you have any questions. I had quite a bit of distraction beyond the hedge. Start, stop, pause, start again. So if this was a little bit detached, I do apologize. I hope though that I could explain my thought process as to why giving the cakey a little bit of the mother cane is a good idea and that there are downsides to twisting a cakey off a cane. It is very, very difficult and some are super tender and we can end up destroying not just roots, but also very tender cells at the base of a cakey. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so very, very much. Ila or Ila Cleon. I hope a demonstration also helped as opposed to just the novel in the comments. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I wish you a very beautiful day. On one condition, though, as always, though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.